At the University of New England, one professor and his students have a lofty goal. They want to reverse the course of one piece of history. Professor Thomas Clack wants the main landscape to look more the way it did in the early 1900s before more than four billion trees were accidentally wiped out. 207's Beth McAvoy is here with the story. Beth. Hi, Rob. Hi, Amanda. It may sound impossible to bring back four million trees, but Professor Clack is taking the task one step, or rather one seed at a time, and he's making some impressive headway. UNE is the second institution, the first in New England, to speed breed an American chestnut tree. And that is the first step to bringing back this keystone species. These are American chestnut seedlings. Professor Thomas Clack and two of his students They're struggling, but they're trying their best. have been tending their seedlings in the greenhouse at the University of New England for months now. They're 99.99% plus American chestnut wild tree. But there's one change. They have a wheat gene inserted in them. Wheat is able to resist the Asian fungal blight that kills the American chestnut tree. Okay, so a fungus wipes out the American chestnut, but now the trees have a gene that protects them. Perfect, story over, right? One issue, the American chestnut tree takes at least 10 years until it's mature enough to produce pollen, pollen that will grow new trees. This is all about speed breeding. We feel a moral obligation to do all we can to bring this species back to the landscape where it belongs. But first, why is this tree so important anyway? A quick history lesson here. American chestnut trees used to be one of the more common trees in the, in the forest and arguably the most important tree in terms of the food value that it provided to wildlife as well as to people. A century ago, the American chestnut could be found in abundance from Maine to Alabama and as far west as Indiana. It grew to more than 100 feet tall. It was nicknamed the Redwood of the East, and in some places, one in every four trees was an American chestnut. Whole villages in Appalachia relied on the economic value of chestnuts. The strong, rot-resistant wood was widely used to build furniture, power lines, and buildings. It was roasted out in the streets of the big cities of the East Coast, Boston, Philadelphia. It was called the cradle-to-grave tree. But in the early 1900s, a fungal blight from Asia was accidentally brought to the U.S. when people started importing smaller Asian chestnut trees to decorate their backyards. It spread rapidly throughout the East and by the 1950s, and it killed four billion trees within, within a half a century time span. Even though the American chestnut can still be found in Maine, today its numbers continue to deteriorate. It's functionally extinct because it cannot reproduce like it, it normally would. Enter in the wheat gene. We are using a biotechnology approach to protecting the American chestnut. Clack has partnered with the State University of New York. The two institutions are the only ones in the world speed breeding the American chestnut with the wheat gene. So we're trying to push these seedlings, which are only nine months old, to sexual maturity. That is when they produce pollen. Mother Nature takes time. Normally it would take many years in the outdoors, 10, could be even 15 years. But in November, the team did it. They successfully grew an American chestnut seedling in nine months that was producing pollen. How they did it? So this is the plant growth chamber is basically giving them what they would experience uh, in the peak summer um, light, but every single day, no, no resting period, no dormant period, no winter period. The growth chamber gives the plants high intensity light for 16 hours a day and regulates temperatures and humidity. We had this as a goal, but we didn't know if we could achieve reaching this level because to push a tree that quickly to sexual maturity is, is challenging. Tyler Riendu was the first to spot the pollen. He's got an eye for it. It's amazing uh, once I found it. At first I was pretty skeptical. He brought it to Professor Clack for confirmation. And he was typically low key, you know, it's like, oh, what do you think this might be? It's like, <laughs> what? Oh, we did it. Yeah. <laughs> the amount of work we put in weekends, weekdays, right after class um, to finally get results is it's definitely accomplishing and very, very self-rewarding. We're like happy parents. What takes a decade to accomplish in nature, the team has been able to do on the Biddeford campus in less than a year. And it's not just in the growth chamber. This is the first uh, American chestnut in the greenhouse to produce pollen. You can see kind of like that. 
Shortly after students found pollen on the growth chamber plant, the greenhouse seedlings started to produce pollen as well. Uh, we finally uh, established our goal of producing pollen in a greenhouse. The team regulates the plant's light, humidity, water pH levels, and they even talk to the plants. I just told them that they're doing great and that, like, I'm proud of them <laughs> and that I love them. Professor Clack and his students are now collecting the pollen with the wheat gene and freezing it. They're waiting approval from the USDA. If permitted, they will cross the pollen created in the lab with the wild trees in Maine as they try to bring back the species. This is the biggest ecological reversal we'll be able to achieve. We need to reinstill this knowledge in our culture of how important the American chestnut tree is to the eastern United States, and we're going to do it. Professor Clack is hoping that it won't be long until a blight-resistant seed is available to the public so Mainers can start planting it. Have you ever had roasted chestnuts? I hadn't until I met Professor Clack. He <laughs> he fed me some and they were delicious. Really? Yeah. You had them? I have not. Yeah, I, I had them once. That was enough. Oh. But I'm all in favor of bringing back the chestnuts. Cool story. Great story. Thanks, Thanks Beth. You're welcome.